Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing Elementary OS on a separate disk without using a USB drive or DVD. Elementary OS is an Ubuntu distribution with a gentle learning curve that looks very similar to Mac OS. And installing it on another disk is great if you want to keep things separate from Windows. So to get started, I'm going to elementary.io and at the bottom here it says pay what you can. And if you can't pay, you can go to custom and you can put in zero and then you can download elementary OS. Download. After downloading, go into your downloads folder and then select the image and then hit enter or right click and mount. Open. And then so it's mounted the ISO onto a virtual drive. It's on the E drive here. And now I'm going to open up Disk Management. And so there's Disk 0. This is my SSD drive. And it's 476 gigabytes. And it has Windows. And there's my C drive. And then my second disk, Disk 1, is my NVMe drive. It's 224 gigabytes. And it's just a data drive. And I'm going to be installing elementary OS onto this drive here. And I don't need to use the full drive. I can just use some existing free space on it. And I have 141 gigabytes free. So more than enough free space. And on my D drive, I don't need to shrink it here. I can do all of that in the installer. And then there's my virtual drive here, which has the ISO mounted. And it's 3.04 gigabytes. So I'm going to be creating a new partition of roughly the same size, and this will be on my first drive, so I'll be able to boot from it. And after I'm done with installing elementary OS, I'll be removing it. So I'm going into my C drive, I'm going to shrink it. 3300 megabytes. And there's my unallocated space. Right click, new simple volume. Next, next, next. And the file system will be FAT32. And the volume label, ISO, next, finish. And now I'm going to go into Explorer. And I'm going to copy everything from the E drive. And I'm going to go into my new F drive and paste. Now going back into disk management. And my F drive here, it's seen as a basic data partition, and I'm going to be setting it up as an EFI system partition, similar to how my 100 megabyte Windows EFI partition here is. So to do that, I'm going to go into disk part, start disk part, and then run as administrator. Yes. Type in list disk, and I'm going to select disk zero, my first disk, list my partitions, I'm going to be selecting partition number 5, the 3300 megabyte partition. Type in help, set ID, and I'm going to scroll up. Look for the EFI system partition value in hex. I'm going to copy it and type in set ID equals and then paste and enter. All right, and so we see that the partition ID has been set and we go into disk management. It has been set as well. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that Secure Boot is disabled. And if you have Fast Boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one-time boot into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that? Go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description, UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. All right, and so it's booted into the installation media partition. And it says here, try or install elementary OS with safe graphics and advanced options. And so I'm going to select the first option. All right, it started up, and I'm going to select my language, English, select, and your location, select, keyboard layout, and then select, and then default, select, 
And there are three options here. You can try the demo mode, so you just want to try out elementary OS. And then there's erase disk and install, which I don't want to do. And then there's custom install advanced. So this is the option I'll be selecting. Custom install. And so here it asks to select your partitions. And at the top here it says selecting format will erase all data on the selected partition, which I don't want to do. I don't want to format my NTFS partition here. And it says here you must at least select a root partition and an optional boot partition. And it's also recommended to select a swap partition. So I'm going to be creating three new partitions, one for root, one for the EFI partition for elementary OS and a swap partition. So to do that, I'm going to go to Modify Partitions and GParted starts up and GParted is a new partition editor. And so it's selected my NVMe drive. And then I'm going to be selecting my NTFS partition, right click and then resize. And then so I can use the slider here to adjust the NTFS partition size. Or I can just put it down here into the field. So I'll do, for example, 100 gigabytes of free space and resize. And so there's one operation pending. I'm going to hit the check mark to apply. Apply. And then close. And then so there's my unallocated space. And now I'm going to create the three new partitions. Right click, new. And the first partition is going to be for the EFI partition for elementary OS. So I'll put 512 megabytes for it. And then the file system is going to be FAT32. And then I'll label it as Elam EFI. And then add. And then the next partition, right click new. And this will be for swap. And I have 12 gigs of RAM on this system here, so I'll do 12 gigs. File system, Linux swap. And then the label, I'll label it as Elam swap. Add. And then finally, the last partition will be for everything else. And I'll use the remaining space. And then the file system will be ext4. I'll label it as Elam root. Add. All right, and so there are my three new partitions, and I'm going to hit the check mark to apply. Apply. And so it's done. I'm going to hit close. And then I'm going to close gparted. And it did a rescan, and we can see here the new partitions, like EFI partition, the swap partition, and slash partition. So I'm going to select the EFI partition. I'm going to use partition. I'm going to format it. And it's already selected to be set up as an EFI partition. And, and we're going to click out of it and then go on to the next partition, use partition, and then use a swap, click out of it. And then the last partition, use partition. I'm going to format it, use it as root, and then default ext4, click out. And sometimes if you can't click out of it, you could just hit escape and you can get out and then hit next. And this screen here, Broadcom Wi-Fi adapters, NVIDIA graphics, and some virtual machines may not function properly without additional drivers. Most devices do not require additional drivers. And so depending on the hardware you have, you'll have to select it. For example, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and then I'm going to hit erase and install. Now, it actually isn't going to be erasing anything. It's actually just going to be doing an install. So I'm going to select it. And then at the bottom right, there's an icon here. You can select it, and it'll show the log. And so we can see here that it's obtaining the partition information. You can select the icon again. And then so this will take a little bit of time to install. All right. And elementary OS has been installed, and your device will automatically restart. Uh, after restarting, you can set up a new user, or you can shut down now and set up a new user later. So I'm going to hit restart. Now elementary OS will install the Grub bootloader. 
So when I restart, it should boot into it. But to make sure, I'm going to go into the BIOS just to confirm. All right, in my BIOS boot order, boot option number one is the Windows Boot Manager. Boot option number two is UFI OS, and boot option number three is Ubuntu. And it says here, Ubuntu instead of elementary OS, because elementary OS is based off of it. So I'll need to change it so it's boot option number one. And then save changes and exit. All right, it's booted into Grub here, and I got elementary OS, the advanced option, an entry for Windows, and the UFI firmware settings. So I'm going to go into elementary OS. All right, and so it's booted into the OS, and this screen may look familiar. It's asking for your language, and it's just part of the install process. So I'm going to select my language, English, and then United States, select, keyboard layout, select, Default select, and here it asks for your full name, username, password, and device name. And after you fill out the field, and then hit finish setup. Put in my password. All right, and the welcome screen comes up, and so I can quickly go through it. Next, and choose your look. I'll set it as the default. Next, if you want to enable a nightlight, yep. Next. And if you want to set up housekeeping, old files can be automatically deleted after 30 days to save space and to help protect your privacy. So you can do that if you want. And then next. And then to set up your online accounts. I'll do that later. Next. And here is to get some apps. Get the apps you need on App Center or Sideload Flat Pack. Apps from alternative stores. Next. And there's automatic updates. If you want to enable automatic updates, or if you want to review them, you can just unselect, and then you can update them manually, and then next, and then get started. All right, so I'm in elementary OS, and so I have here, similar to like the dock in Mac OS at the bottom, and now I'm going to restart my computer, make sure I can get back into Windows. All right, I'm at Grub, and I'm gonna select Windows. I'm gonna log in. All right, and I'm back in Windows. I'm going to open up Disk Management. All right, and so we see here that Elementary OS has been installed on my second disk, on my NVMe drive, and there's the EFI partition, there's a swap partition, and there's root slash. And so the installation media partition right here, I no longer need, so I can remove it. And if you try to right click and Go to delete volume, it is grayed out. So I'll have to remove this in disk part. So I'm going to go into disk part as admin. List my disks. Select disk zero. List my partitions. And select partition number four. And type in delete partition override. And so it has been removed. And I'm going back into disk management. And I'm going to select my C drive. And I'm going to extend the volume. Next, next, finish. All right, that's it. So that's how you can install elementary OS on a separate disk without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.